Good evening. I'm Spot on Weather meteorologist Matthew Euler, and tonight we're going to take a look at some changes ahead for Southeast Virginia. Um, I titled tonight's presentation Early Winter Pattern Ahead. Um, right now it's very mild here on the 5th of November 2018. Very mild evening outside. Temperatures in the low 60s. Uh, we have dew points in the lower 60s as well. And uh, a very calm night out there, not much in the way of wind, very calm, uh, very warm, and uh, it's going to remain very mild here over the next uh, three, to, three to four days or so, and then this weekend we'll start seeing some dropping off in temperatures, and then next week could really, really be the coldest air of the season so far. So let's get right to the uh, discussion, starting off with... Looking at the jet stream, I'm showing you two two different dates. Looking at the 14th to 15th of November, uh, this would be next week, um, Wednesday Thursday time period, and we have a, a very strong upper level ridge building into western Canada, and a very very cold trough, upper air trough. Um, situated from Canada, blowing strong northwesterly winds, lots of cold air. You know, now we're getting into November, mid-November. The, uh, the days are getting sh very short, especially out over Canada. In addition, there's been a lot of snowpack already building up over Canada and North America as a whole. So there's a lot of cold air that's just sitting up over Canada, and it's just waiting to ride the jet stream winds southeastward uh, into the base of this long wave trough. So quite some amplification in the long wave pattern, the jet stream pattern uh, midweek as we have a huge upper air ridge and a deepening long wave trough situated from the northern plains into the east coast. So it's going to be really interested, interesting to see how this all plays out. Now high temperatures midweek next week may only be in the 40s for southeast Virginia with low temperatures dipping down into the lower to middle 30s. Uh, so we're, again, we'll have to watch this. These type of patterns generally lead to very cold air uh, as well as some sort of storm development, low pressure development, uh, generally in the southeastern United States, uh, moving northeastward. Looking at the American GFS model and then also the European model, uh, the American GFS model latest uh, model run indicates some sort of lower pressure developing, taking an inside track from the uh, southeast and moving up the Appalachians, the spine of the Appalachians. Um, the European model shows a coastal low further out to sea, off the coast, allowing for much colder air to come in. Let's take a look at a few factors here. These are some of the factors we look at when we talk about the winter weather forecast. And the circular area there, the area I circled, up in the Gulf of Alaska, these are current sea surface temperature anomalies, or how much above or below normal the sea surface temperatures are. If it's a red area, that indicates above normal sea surface temperatures. If it's a blue area, it's cooler than normal sea surface temperatures. So two main areas. Of course, as we approach the winter season, we're expecting a weak El Nino. Um, the Climate Prediction Center has put that out, a 70 to 75 percent chance of a weak El Nino developing. Um, you know, I didn't really talk about this in previous presentations, but it's a special type of El Nino, the Modoki uh, El Nino, where the warmest waters are out more towards uh, the central Pacific Ocean, vice the uh, eastern Pacific Ocean right there off of the coast of South America. They're further west in that type of El Nino pattern, the Modoki. Um, and, and in this is the case, we have above normal sea surface temperatures here south of the Hawaiian Islands. And then we also have some very warm sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Alaska. So uh, that usually favors when you get those really um, major discrepancies in sea surface temperatures or anomalies. We get the really, really warm or above normal water temperatures. That favors an upper level ridge. And if you get an upper level ridge that builds over the Gulf of Alaska, uh, into Western Canada, you know, if you get that persistent ridge like we had in the 2013-2014 um, winters, it could be a very, very cold winter this year across the uh, eastern United States. So just something to keep an eye on over time. I just wanted to show you this. Now, we need to start talking about teleconnections. Right? These are very important. A teleconnection is simply uh, 
one of those indices or indexes we look at in determining what type of weather we would typically have. We look at teleconnections, we look at Arctic Oscillation AO, the North Atlantic Oscillation the NAO, and then the PNA is a Pacific North American pattern as well as a Madden Julian Oscillation. So here's the latest teleconnection forecast courtesy of the Climate Prediction Center. Um, in general, the uh, first week, the first five to oh, about ten days of November, uh, we're looking at a forecast for a negative Arctic Oscillation. Now keep in mind a negative Arctic Oscillation favors colder than normal temperatures for Southeast Virginia and the East Coast as a whole. The uh, middle graphic there, the North Atlantic Oscillation, we're also expecting a negative trend to that. Um, here in the first uh, week or so of November. On the far right, showing you the Pacific North American pattern, and that is also trending negative, uh, fairly neutral right now, the first week of November, uh, but then trending more negative as we get toward mid-November. Now, Pacific North American pattern, uh, basically that is a situation where if it's a positive Pacific North American pattern, it favors a ridge in the upper air ridge in the western U.S. and a trough in the eastern U.S. If it's a negative Pacific North American pattern, it favors a uh, trough in the east and then a ridge, upper air ridge in the uh, trough in the west and a ridge in the east. So you have to look at all these teleconnections in developing a long-range forecast. You also have to look at, again, the sea surface temperatures, especially in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, because we get our weather, either, as you know, from the middle latitudes, the weather moves from west to east. So let's take a look at the typical Arctic Oscillation and North Atlantic Oscillation teleconnections and for November in general. Um, as you can see on the left here, we're showing you the AO, the Arctic Oscillation. Um, the blue and aqua colors indicate below normal temperatures. If there's white shading on these charts, that indicates the temperatures are fairly close to normal. So you'll notice with a negative Arctic Oscillation on the left and a negative North Atlantic Oscillation on the right, that generally leads to below normal temperatures from the Northern Plains stretching into the Midwestern U.S. all the way over to the East Coast. Okay, now these teleconnections mean different things at different times of the year. If I were to show you a, an example of what a negative AO and NAO mean in December, it would be completely different. Uh, it would still be cold in the normal for the Eastern U.S., but it may be uh, much more drastic. So this is the typical conditions we'd expect with a negative AO and a negative NAO. Let's take a look at the PNA teleconnections. This is uh, the indicator when you have a, a positive Pacific North American pattern. Uh, that's again where you get the ridge, the, the strong upper air ridge, the jet stream level 30,000 feet situated over the western U.S. into western Canada. And then you get a trough downstream of that ridge into the eastern U.S producing below normal temperatures for Southeast Virginia as well as a lot of the mid-Atlantic states. And then we have to look at the Madden-Julian Oscillation forecast and a Madden-Julian Oscillation that is really focused in the Pacific, especially the tropical Pacific. Um, on the left I'm showing you a, a forecast for the Madden-Julian Oscillation off the American GFS run as well as the uh, GFS Ensemble forecasting system. And we're generally situated around a 2 at the present time. And we've been situated uh, anywhere between 8, 1, and 2. And on the right-hand side, I'm showing you uh, the image is showing you the uh, temperature composites for November, December, and January. And generally, if you have a Phase 7 MJO, Phase 8, and Phase 1, you're generally looking at below normal temperatures across the eastern U.S., including southeast Virginia. On the other hand, if that MJO were to be forecast into the, let's say, phase one, phase uh, four, phase, uh, rather phase three, uh, phase three, four, five, and six. If the MJO is in those areas, we have above normal temperatures in the Midwestern U.S. East. So it's very important to start taking a look at all these teleconnections and see what's going on. Now this is courtesy of the Climate Prediction Center, uh, a branch of NOAA. This is their long-range temperature outlook, and ooh, if you can, see, you can really see the bluer colors, the bluer shadings here, indicating below normal temperatures are projected, mainly from November 10th through the 14th. The coldest air situated over the Midwest: Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, into Missouri. And in fact, they could be looking at their first snowfall across the Midwestern U.S. here uh, going into this next weekend. If you look on the right-hand side, the 
The forecast period is for November 12th through the 18th, and that below normal temperatures continue from the Midwestern U.S. into the Eastern U.S. You have the warmest temperatures above normal temperatures out in California into uh, Oregon in parts of the Pacific Northwest. Now, we would totally expect that to happen, especially with a weak El Nino. We're expecting a colder than normal winter for Southeast Virginia and above normal precipitation. I haven't shown you any of the surface charts with precipitation uh, on them to, tonight, but I just looking at the runs, the model runs, we're start, already starting to see that weak El Nino pattern where we get a stronger subtropical jet, a lot more moisture associated with that in the southern states, and we're getting these lows that want to come up the coast. You get enough of this cold air to come down and meet that moisture, and you could have a recipe for wintry weather. Um, as we get closer towards January, is typically when, you know, January, February, and even in early March, is typically when you see uh, wintry precip for Southeast Virginia. Of course, the last few years, we've had some pretty good snowstorms in early January. Uh, but in general, that's our climatology for Southeast Virginia, is snows generally occur in February and in March. Now here, I wanted to end tonight's presentation by showing you what the European model is looking like. Um, this is the 12Z model run from today, the 5th of November, 2018. And look at these forecasted high temperatures. Now, I, I just took a sample city, Norfolk. And if you look, you know, we got a very mild day in store for Tuesday, the 6th of November, 2018. You know, temperatures could be up near 80 degrees get a cold front to approach the area tomorrow evening, could have some scattered showers and thunderstorms. There's a slight risk of severe weather by the Storm Prediction Center for the tomorrow evening, by the way. And then you get a cool off the next day on Wednesday after that cold front moves through. So a little bit of a drop Wednesday, a drop on into Thursday, and then it warms up a little bit and gets mild again on Friday ahead of the more significant cold front, which moves through here Friday evening. And look at the temperatures, the highs. You know, this is a European model. Uh, out of all the models, it's looking like it's the coldest model. Um, just showing you what's to come. Uh, Saturday, November 10th, we're looking at a high of 52 degrees here in uh, Southeast Virginia, 53 on Sunday, um, and then 55 on Monday, Veterans Day. But then look at the drop off the 14th and 15th next week. Um, you know, there's a lot of time for this to change, and we do have about 60 degree water off the coast right now, so that's going to modify this air mass somewhat, of course. Uh, but 45 degrees for a high on Wednesday, November 14th, and then 42, that's it for Thursday the 15th. Yeah, it's going to be very, very uh, cold if that were to come true. You know, I was looking at the thickness, the thickness forecast, and, you know, 522 decameter thickness in this area, that is pretty, pretty cold, and uh, that could result in these very cold temperatures. So just wanted to throw that out there that we do have a pattern change coming starting this weekend especially and then into the middle of next week. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if this cold keeps coming in waves or if there's any kind of flip-flop to the pattern. Um, what I'm curious about is this warmer above normal area that I have circled out over the Gulf of Alaska because ridges, upper air ridges generally like to form out over those uh, above normal water areas over the Gulf of Alaska. And if the ridge were to really be persistent out in that part of the uh, of the North American continent and the uh, North Pacific Ocean, that could yield some really cold uh, air uh, more persistently this winter for Southeast Virginia. So we're keeping an eye on all that stuff. Um, I'm very excited uh, about you know where we're at right now. Again, we are expecting a colder than normal, above normal snowfall. Weak El Nino still forecasts 70 to 75 percent chance of development, according to the Climate Prediction Center. All right, that wraps things up tonight. It's spot on weather. In spot on weather, we approve this forecast. If we're not spot on, we're not doing it right. Have a great evening, everybody.